Today we're taking a look at the modded 3DS and a modded PS Vita and putting them against each other. We're going to take a look at what you can do on a modded Vita and a modded 3DS, memory options you have to store all those games, emulators, and homebrew, reasons you might want to get one, prices of these units, and ultimately one you might want to pull the trigger on. I love both of these systems and in the current year they are better than ever. I know the 3DS online servers just got shut down. I'm sure the Vita is not far behind, but these systems are incredible and you are truly unlocking the power of each system when they are fully modded. The Vita and 3DS are definitely both getting up there age-wise, but when you mod them, it really breathes a new light into each system with all of the ports, games, emulators, and backups you can play, and you might want to dust one of these off if you've had one sitting around for a while. Both of these systems are pretty easy to mod nowadays. The Vita doesn't even require a computer, which it's easier than ever, and the 3DS does require a PC, but it's pretty easy to do. And I'll leave links to uh, guides that I like below that are pretty easy and they go over it step by step on how to mod both of these. So this is where things are gonna get pretty interesting. I'm gonna be talking about what you can do on each system. First off, we'll go with the PS Vita and we'll be checking out PKGJ, which is kind of their free store where you can download tons of games. So right here we have PKGJ, which is essentially the Vita free store as I like to call it, man. With this, you can download pretty much any Vita game ever released in different regions, different languages. And as you can see here, I mean, A through Z, this has you covered, man. Vita games have gotten pretty pricey over the last few years specifically, man. So it's really, really nice to have access to, you know, the entire library. Another major pro of a modded Vita is what we have right here, the homebrew store or the homebrew browser. This is a really cool app on your modded Vita that will allow you to check out homebrew, ports of different games, it'll allow you to download emulators, utilities, plugins. And dude, big shout out to the modding community for the Vita because they've allowed so many ports to be playable here on the Vita. I mean, they've done what? Max Payne, the older Grand Theft Autos from the PS2 era, I know there's a Dead Space mobile port, and it practically seems like new ports are coming out every day. I mean, there's always something new coming to the Vita, and that's probably the best part about having a modded Vita, is the modding community has really, really put a ton of effort into this. More effort than Sony did the last few years of its life, that's for sure. So that's a huge selling point of having a modded Vita, is all the great ports that are playable on this system. And if you thought the Vita library was small, which it is, luckily with a modded Vita, you can use Adrenaline, which basically turns your Vita into a PSP and gives you access to the entire PSP library, which is a huge, huge pro of having a modded Vita. Another cool part about having a modded Vita is you can actually overclock the system and you can use certain plugins like Vita Graphics right here, which allow you to turn off a frame rate lock and have certain games run and play smoother, like the Jack and Daxter collection, for example. One area where Sony really messed up with the Vita was these proprietary memory cards, which are super expensive, kinda hard to come by, but luckily with a modded Vita man, you can bypass that with SD2 Vita, which allows you to really expand the storage of your Vita so you can store all those PSP games, Vita games, emulators, PS1 titles, you name it, you won't have to worry about memory. All right, so now let's talk what you can do on a modded 3DS. Lots of cool stuff you can do on a 3DS. A lot of the things are actually similar to the Vita, but yeah, let's jump right into it. So by now we probably all know that the Nintendo eShop has been closed and that's where H-Shop comes into play. So the H-Shop is really cool, man. Gives you the ability to once again, kind of similar to the Vita, download pretty much any game ever released for the system from any region as well, which is really cool if you're interested in some games that maybe never released here in the US. And this is probably my favorite feature of having a modded 3DS and going on H-Shop. You get access to all of the virtual console games from Game Boy, the original Nintendo, the SNES, the Game Boy Color, the GBA. Lately, I've been playing some Mega Man X-Man from the SNES, so really cool that you can go back and play all these old school games on your 3DS. With a modded 3DS, you have tons of options. You can have emulators like an SNES, NES. The 3DS can also play PS1 and run PS1 games, which I think is super impressive. You, know, you don't really think of a 3DS being able to emulate PS1, so that's awesome. Of course, you can play original DS games. There's some certain methods on here as well. 
And of course, you can do custom themes on a 3DS, which can be really cool and make your console feel nice and fresh. As for memory cards, luckily Nintendo is smart enough to not make the same mistake that Sony made and allowed you to use micro SD cards off the bat. So I have a 128 gigabyte one in mine, and I'm not even remotely close to running out of storage, dude. Right here, I'm just showing off a 32, but if you put a 128 in your modded 3DS, you're pretty much good to go. All right, so now let's get into pricing on both of these systems. And what's kind of funny is the Vita, you know, when it was flopping, was actually pretty cheap for a while. But over the last couple of years, has really climbed up in price, as you can see. On eBay, you're probably looking around 120, 150, 160 ish, depending on what the system comes with maybe a charger, a memory card, games, that kind of thing. If you can, I would highly recommend getting a Japanese Vita, especially if you intend on modding the system. Japanese Vitas are, you know, nine out of 10 times probably gonna be in better condition than a Vita you'd find at a shop here in the States. And once you mod it, you can swap that circle and X button around so the X is actually confirmed instead of the reverse like it is over in Japan. Now here we are checking out 3DS prices and I personally have a new 3DS XL. I would recommend that model as well. On eBay, they're going for around, you know, 140, even up into the low twos, depending if you get some games, chargers, cases, condition, that kind of thing. Um, you can also go the Japan route for 3DSs. Um, but luckily here in the States, I mean, I feel like they're a little more common than the Vita. With 3DSs over here, man, I mean, the prices have really, really gone crazy over the past, I'd say three, four years. If you're not wanting to shell out that kind of money on a 3DS XL, you can go the 2DS route, which is more of a budget system. And I know a lot of people actually prefer the 2DS just because they don't want to deal with the clamshell and it's cheaper. So luckily with the 3DS family systems, you have a couple of different options and tons of different colors, which is really cool. One thing I will say is if you're out there looking for a 3DS is some of these special edition systems can be insanely expensive. I know the SNES version, really cool, don't get me wrong, but that thing is insane right now price-wise. So if you're out there looking, man, you might be blown away if it's been a while since you've checked out a 3DS. Now, if you would have asked me back in like 2016 or 2017, if I thought the Vita or 3DS was better, I probably would have said the 3DS just because at the time the Vita was pretty much killed off. You weren't getting new releases. The 3DS had a really great library. But now with both of these systems being fully modded, being able to download pretty much any game your heart could desire, emulators, ports, homebrew. I mean, the systems feel more alive now than almost ever, and it's a lot harder to make the decision, for me at least, if I would rather have a Vita or a 3DS, or which one I really think is better overall. Now, if I really had to pick, and I could only have one, I would probably lean towards Vita, just because you have the entire PSP library, the Vita has you know, a decent amount of hidden gems, some good JRPGs, and just titles that I probably wouldn't normally play unless it was on a Vita, and of course PS1 games. Um, the power of the Vita is definitely a little bit more of a selling point for me just because of emulators. You know, you can technically have a Dreamcast emulator on the Vita, which is cool. But on the flip side, the 3DS is also really, really fun to play. The 3DS library is incredible. And in my opinion, smokes the Vita library if we're just going library versus library. And the 3DS overall is just a really fun system. It holds up really well. So I don't know, it's a tough one. Like I said, I probably would lean towards Vita but the 3DS is an amazing system, especially when it's modded. But let me know what system you would rather go with. Are you team Vita? Are you team 3DS, man? Let me know. Both these systems are amazing and I'll continue to play them for many years to come. So that'll do it for today's video. Appreciate you watching. Um, let me know if you prefer the Vita or the 3DS or if you have both. I don't think you can go wrong with having both in the collection, but kind of sad that these are probably the last true handhelds that we'll ever see from either Nintendo or Sony. Who knows? Hopefully we get something in the future, but as usual, thanks for watching and we'll catch you soon with another video.